just to give you an idea, we've been in business since 2009, and we have lots of Fed customers. Uh, Jerry uh, sells to a lot of them. And so just to give you an idea, just a, a, a quick smattering of who we've been selling to and who we continue to sell to. But to, oh, what happened to that slide? Sure does look different. Oh, sorry. Next slide. That will do that. So uh, just, to, just to talk about pure storage, are you guys familiar with pure storage? No. Okay. All right. So pure storage is an all-flash array uh, focused on, on performance and, and, and shrinking your footprint in your, in your data center. So tradi traditional disk arrays were refrigerators full of, of drives filling up your data center. We're, get, we're able to really shrink that footprint. And we're going to go through that and talk about how we do that. So we have a great product, best in class data reduction. So uh, a nice story is, do you like pie? And so um, th that's a question. If you like pie, when you buy a pie, would you like to get a pie with a big, like th a quarter of it sliced out of it? And, and the answer is usually no, I want the whole pie, right? Well, when you buy a pie with us, you get the pie plus you get three more or four more pies with that because of the data reduction. You buy a, you buy a terabyte, you get three to five terabytes of, of usable space on that array based on data, data reduction. That allows us to start shrinking your data center footprint. Uh, this, is, this is a picture of our, of our products here. And just to give you an idea where we are on the all flat, on, on uh, Gartner All Flash Magic Quadrant, We've, we lead from a visionary perspective. Uh, and with an ability to execute very high up on the matrix as well. We, we, this, this particular, oh, this one's old. It still looks the same on the, on the new one. Uh, this particular all flash magic quadrant has been, been out for 40 years. We've been in the same spot all four years uh, in, in leading in vision. So. Build slides. All right. We are we are FIPS 142-2 uh, uh, certified data at rest encryption. We have a thing called rapid data locking. This is pretty cool in a forward deployed kind of situation. You can actually have an external key manage key management uh, or key card um, in the in the case where you need to to make sure that the the data is completely. A, 100% encrypted, you can actually take that, that card out, throw it in the shredder, turn off the array. When someone turns on the array, they won't be able to read any of the data. So that's, a, that's, a very, that's an option that is, in, in your space, something that's been very highly utilized. In other spaces, in commercial spaces, they, we don't see it as much. But uh, very nice to have that. And then we're common cri uh, criteria, criteria certified. So covering, the covering you with a security blanket that we actually can keep your data secure. Give you an idea, we have an uh, evergreen business model. So traditionally what happens is you buy storage, you get three years worth of maintenance, and uh, on year three, your storage provider comes and knocks on your door and says, hey, here's years four and five uh, of su uh, support, so your maintenance goes up, or hey, Here's a quote for new stuff. And you look at it, and the quote for the new stuff is about as much as if you just paid for two more years worth of maintenance. You're like, well, I get new stuff. This is great. But this is kind of a model that, that injects a whole bunch of risk, waste, and expense. Because you, you're just basically recycling, or not even recycling. You're throwing away everything every three year, three to five years and buying new. Um, this stuff goes into a landfill. It, you get no value for it. In fact, one of my customers, they had a $2 million VMAX. After three years, they, they get their maintenance bill. So they're like, oh, well, we'll look at new stuff. And they, they went with Pure. And they went to trade it. They went to, to sell their VMAX on the open market. And they got a whole $10,000 for it. $2 million VMAX is now worth $20,000 because you don't get to reuse the software. You don't get any of that. Well, we thought that model was broken. So we, we set out to fix it with what we call our evergreen model. No forklift upgrades, no data migration, no, down, uh, no plan downtime, and no performance degradation. So what, what, that, that's really a nice high level from a technical perspective what it is. But when we start looking at it, when we talk about non-disruptive upgrades of all hardware and software, 
Every time I need to do a hardware or software upgrade or I need to do a controller replacement, any kind of hardware replacement within the system, it's 100% non-disruptive. And when we're non-disruptive from a, from a from a performance, I'm sorry, from an access perspective and a performance perspective. So you take no hit on performance there. The next thing is this flat maintenance model. So at the end of year three, we're gonna still come and knock on your door, but the price for your maintenance for years four through six is gonna be the same or less as what you paid in years one through three. Again, we're gonna come knock on your door at the end of year six, seven through nine, same price of year as years one through three and it goes on forever. We call that for, uh, forever flash. So always the same price. You go, well, now I have this old equipment that I, that I keep putting maintenance on. Well, every time you pay for three year, the, the next three years worth of maintenance, we actually come in and replace the controllers for free. So we, we, uh, we come in and we replace the heart and the brains of the, of the storage array every three years, so you're always on the latest and greatest controllers. So, and, Coming back, we do this all non-disruptively, which force, you, don't, you don't have to do any forklift upgrades. You don't have to do any data migration, and you don't have to rebuy any software license. First of all, you never bought a software license to start with. You still get snapshots, replication, anything new we come out with is included in your maintenance cost, but no forklift upgrades, and, and we do all that over and over again. So the next question that usually gets, gets asked is, what about the drives? I, I hear flash drives wear out. Well, because of doing data, uh, data reduction, we, we actually see, we're seeing 20 plus years of life span on the SSD drives. So we warn, we, we will, as long as you are under maintenance, we will warranty that drive against any kind of failure or wear. So you don't have to buy, you don't have to rebuy capacity. The other option, the other thing is you may not want, like we have customers that bought 256 gig drives two or three years ago. Well, in five years from now, they're not gonna want a 256 gig drive. The, we're talking about data center consolidation, right? I don't want a bunch of 256 gig drives. I want the 18.3 terabyte drives that, that are now out or 60 terabyte drives or whatever they might be. So what we do with that is we never make you buy, pay for the same capacity twice. So let's say today you had 100 terabytes, and in three years from now, or four years from now, you wanna to go to 400 terabytes, we're gonna only, only charge you the difference between the three, the, the difference between the 400 and the 100, so we're gonna charge you for 300 terabytes worth of capacity. Really easy math problem. As long as you buy 4X, we're gonna give you full credit, full trade-in credit for those drives. So when we talk about the VMAX that I, that I was talking about before that traded in, get $10,000 for, for us, we're giving full credit for, for uh, at, at the current prices of those drives. So does that make sense? We're all good? Okay. I usually wouldn't ask that of 100 people, but there's only, or it's a handful. And feel free to ask any, any questions anytime. Uh, and so this just goes into the, the forever flash. So it's flat and fair, so it's gonna be, remain flat. The maintenance can go on forever and no worries from, a, from hardware replacement and we upgrade the controllers every three years, just like I mentioned. But, it's in, but in order to provide that, we, we, need to, we needed to build a system and engineer a system that stayed evergreen, that allowed us to stay evergreen. Just because, just because you can put together a marketing program that can actually let you be evergreen, you have to have technology that backs it up. So we, we, we've geared this from the ground up to be able to, 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 to do these continuous upgrades. And so we went from external controllers to a chassis-based model, and I'm gonna talk about that here real quick. So, in 2009, we had a decision to make when we, when we were founded. Do we focus on software or do we focus on building this really uber fast hardware? And we said, we think software is the right place to start. We wanna make sure that we have the data reduction services. We wanna make sure that we, are, we have snapshots and replication, all those data services that you're used to seeing in an enterprise class storage array. So we focused on software and we delivered it, and we, we delivered it on commodity-based hardware. And, and about two years into, after we started delivering hardware, 
I mean software, were like, wouldn't it be nice if we built some hardware that matched the capabilities our so to our software perfectly? So we went out and built the, the Flash Array M, which is a chassis-based model. Look, you gotta like the orange. Everybody likes orange in their data center, don't they? Yeah, so a uh, little, little tangent. I was in a, I went into a, a, a colo facility that about two weeks ago and they said, we turned on the, so, someone turned on these arrays and, and the data center manager ran out there and was wondering what was going on. He thought there was a fire going on in the corner because these things, they really do burn really bright orange because of the, the, glow, of the, the glow of the big orange pea. Anyway, tangent. Um, so it's a, so what we have is we have a three a three U chassis, with uh, with flash modules in it. Those fl we also have these NVRAM modules that allow us to make sure that we keep that we never go into a, a write through mode. So what what that is is as as uh, data comes into the array or writes come into the array, we mirror we mirror and cache to the other controller, and then we also mirror into the NVRAM modules or copy into the NVRAM modules. And then we acknowledge a write back to the host. Why is this important? The, what's important about it is if I, if I ever have a controller go offline, whether it's a planned, a planned outage, an unplanned outage, a software event of some sort, I can still maintain 100% performance because my, as I'm writing into the system, I have my writes mirrored in other places so I'm never at a threat of losing something that's sitting in cache. So that's what the NVRAM modules provide. And what they're made up of, very simple, they're made up of three components. They're made up of a little bit of DRAM, I'm sorry, quite a bit of DRAM, a little bit of flash, and a supercapacitor. So in, the, in a power event where the array goes down, the supercapacitor keeps the DRAM up long enough, that's where, where our writes are sitting, and destages it to the flash. So when we power up the array, it just picks up right where it left off and keeps on processing writes and reads. And we've seen this in action over and over again. In fact, what's interesting, uh, do you guys manage storage? No? So this is all, you're like, oh, this guy's giving me a storage presentation. But have you ever, have you ever heard of what, what the power down procedure is for storage? It's, they're very, very complicated. For us, you go in and you pull the power cables on the controllers and. That, that's, our, that's our power down procedure. And the reason we did that is because we wanted to make sure that the thing came back up after it powered down in a way that it didn't like. And so, so and we've, we noticed with our competitors, a lot of them have these very complicated power down procedures. So when they have an event where it went down in a way it didn't like, they can take days and days to come back on, up online and we don't have that issue. And so you're like, all right, why, how is this all about data center consolidation? Where is this going? So we, get, we have all these different capacities we get to do. Um, we have a story where we started big, went, kept getting smaller over time. So, yeah. I'm like Vanna White. And what's interesting is you'll notice 5.5, .5, that was the largest that this array could be. And they, so you said they started with a 320? Yep. They probably have the dual controller. Yep. So the, the, the largest they could do is, a, is 11 terabytes. Go three years forward, they can get an M20. And as part of that, the M20 can actually address 88 terabytes of effective uh, raw space. So pretty neat in that I've upgraded these controllers. Now it can actually add capacity without doing anything. And 
And I've gotten more, as I, I guess I can go back a couple more slides, my, our data packs get denser and denser. Before, I, uh, an 11 terabyte array took, took two, uh, four U for the controllers, and then another, another four U for, for the storage. Now I have 38 terabyte data packs, which take up half a three U chassis. So I can get dent, more dense and more dense all the time. So I, I was getting to the, po the portion about how we can actually help shrink your data center footprint. And this is what happens. And that's a natural part of this evergreen story, is that we can keep getting more and more dense all the time, with, uh, as, in some cases, just as part of your maintenance. So uh, lots, and, lots of options, and uh, I'll go through that. So, I'm gonna talk about our new product a little bit, the Flash Array X, which is, which is, we've been talking about the Flash Array M. Flash Array X actually moves us into NVMe. All right, anyone know, anyone know what NVMe is? You've heard of it? You don't know what NVMe? Don't feel bad if you don't know, there's lots of people that don't know. So generally, in storage, connectivity between the, the array and the or the controllers and the drives is SAS based, so serially attached SCSI. That protocol, it, it, we, I mean, well, here's what it is. So that protocol was built, or the SCSI based protocol was designed for spinning media. So in order for an array to talk to its media, it basically has to go through all this plumbing and, into, and, and through all this stuff that allows us to do garbage collection encryption, and it, this is all controlled by the firmware on the drive. So we build an array, we, we source our drives from, from Samsung and Toshiba, you might have heard it, I know little bitty companies, but we source our drives from them and they provide the firmware on, on these drives. So they're doing, all this, they're doing all this work. And we have no control over it, and there's lots of stuff we wanna have control over. So we said, what if we can get rid of this SAS interconnect, which again was built for spinning drives, which actually limits how much capacity we can, we can ad effectively address in a, in, a, in a drive. So 256 gig drive, no big deal. But Toshiba and Samsung have announced 60 terabyte drives. And what, I, what I'll liken this to is you guys live in a house or an apartment. If you filled up your house or apartment, uh, it's got one or two doors or maybe a few more. If you filled it up with people and said, everybody get out, it'd take a, take a minute or two for everybody to get out of your house. Now, that's a 256 gig drive. Now, let's go and look at a 60 terabyte drive. Now, that's saying the same amount of doors and a soccer stadium full of people. And so, it's all this capacity that I can address at a performance with a performance perspective. So, it, it's limiting how dense we can get within our flash arrays because we're like, well, about the largest drive we really want to address is a nine terabyte drive, and they're selling 60 terabyte drives today. What if, A, we can get rid of this plumbing, and B, we can allow our array to manage the, the, the flash underneath directly? So I, th I, I liken it to the, the Unimine. You guys ever watch, what, what? You guys don't have kids that watch, I think it was The Incredibles, the Unimine. All right, anyway, so this is no fun. No. Um, but, but essentially what it is, it's allowing us to, to uh, address everything with 64,000, the NVMe part of that is that now we have 64,000 lanes in order to get to, or queues to get to our, to our flash. So now we can start building these really large, dense drives, we can start addressing those 60 terabyte drives. Relate that back, what's that mean? In three U worth of space today, we can put three, remember uh, before it used to take eight U to get 11 terabytes. Now in three U, we can, we can deliver with 18 terabyte drives. We can deliver 360 terabytes of raw capacity, which when you layer on data reduction and those kinds of technologies, allows us to get a, a, almost a petabyte of space in three U. So we do this via these, these direct flash modules. Uh, that's what it looks like. We, we, instead of buying drives from Toshiba, we're gonna build our own. And so we've built our own. 
I have one I can show you. We can even pass it around if you're really interested. But we have one. We, we, I have one of those. Nailed it. You nailed it. Exactly. And so, so we get rid of all that plumbing. The software talks directly to the flash. Very, very fast. And I don't know if speed is or late, low latency is a big deal for you guys. I mean, I mean, there's only th there's only a few of us here. What what is it you do? Okay. And what is it you do? Okay. Well, you've identified it now. I'm just. <laughs> That's Jerry. <laughs> well, that was real subtle, I know. And <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to. It was you softballed me. So uh, we're just getting a lot more density, and so this all started with simplicity. This is this is our use. Uh, uh, we we you can manage. You can. Uh, I'm sorry. You can install, manage, and troubleshoot an array with a with a four four sided business card. That's the size of a business card, and we, we can provide it. Now, you might need your reading glasses to read it because they're really small print, but the point is it's really, really simple to, to read. So as promised, data center consolidation. This is what, this is what, we're, ta this is what we're looking at. Five cabinets of, the, remember I talked about the customer, $2 million worth of VMAX? Five cabinets of VMAX. This is a two-year-old picture 11U worth of space. Today, that same, that same footprint would be in 3U worth of space. And so two years, two years ago, I'm able to consolidate from five cabinets down to 11U. Today, I'm able to consolidate from 11U down to 3U. And actually, three, that 3U would actually give me more, twice the capacity that those would give me uh, two years ago. So th these guys were, so this was a very cold data center. So I'm, and so when I was installing this array, because I, I actually installed that stuff, every time I got cold, I stood behind these. Because these things are generating a ton, a ton of heat. Because these are all spinning disks, a whole uh, big dr the drives like this size. We're, everything we're doing is flash. So there's no, the, the only moving parts on this whole array are the, are, the fan, are the fans for cooling. So from a cooling perspective, the, there's very, very little heat generated from this. So a big, big benefit in a lot of data centers. So your cooling, your, 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 your cooling requirements, your power requirements, to power one of these is about the equivalent of powering a hair dryer. Yeah, we, but I don't know what one of those is. I have no use for a hair dryer, but to power a hair dryer, uh, that, that's, a, that's about, it's the, the heat requirement I can actually run this in my house. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So the the, the this. Uh, no, it, it actually shrinks because what's generating all the heat in this is the spinning. The spinning is what's creating the friction, which is creating the heat. This is all digital. It's like carrying around. It's like loading up a whole bunch of cell phones in a cabinet. Yeah, but not a lot. Yeah, it's. Is this like twelve hundred watts? No, it's right at sixteen hundred watts. Is what it takes to, to to power one of these. So, which is beneficial when you're looking at shrinking data center footprints and, and those kinds of things. I don't know what kind of environment you're trying to build what you're, you're talking about in, whether power will be an issue or not. And I'm not gonna ask, I know where I am, so.
especially when it's on spinning drives, because when they spin, a you know what keeps spinning drives spinning? Power. When they, when they shut down, they, they actually, you got, any of you guys ride bicycles? You know all that gunk you get in your chain, and your chain goes from silver to black and stuff? Hard drives aren't a lot different. And so when, when they power down and that stuff congeals and gets hard, they power back up and they can't get, they, they basically need, you, bet, you bang on them to get them spinning again. And that's, I mean, that's, we don't have that issue with SSD drives. It, like I said, it's like plugging in your cell phone for storage because it's the same kind of stuff. Although these, this thing can get hot when it's blowing up with, with, with my wife's text. So just looking at us, data, shrinking the data center, pure storage, what it took to get a petabyte of usable in 2012 to a petabyte of usable today in 2017. So I would imagine in a couple of years ago, this is two petabytes of usable in 2019. So I'm sorry, austere? They work pretty good. Um, the only thing you might be a little concerned about there is, uh, is the power supplies themselves. If I, if, I, if I was in an environment like that, I would, my, the two things that would, would I, I would be concerned about, wouldn't be concerned about the, uh, the, the drives as much as I would be the power supplies getting full of junk and, and dust and all that stuff. It's, it's all a matter, it's all relative. How dusty are we talking about, right? Um, but that stuff building up on any, it's an Intel-based processor. So it's a computer just like any other computer that they, they only like so much of that junk on them before they get, get too bad. But um, I mean, you, you've, I mean, Jerry would, I mean, he sells to the Army, so I would imagine that there's... Right. With no with no additional power uh, cooling requirements, just plugged into one ten power. As long as it's uh, we don't do DC power yet. As long as they have AC power, we're good. Today, uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure he's had the requirements for some DC power stuff. But, but most of these do require enough power that you do want to run them on 220 so, or 208. Uh, very easy to, to manage. Uh, incredibly reliable. That's really what this slide's talking about. We, we're running at six nines of reliability across our, uh, across our fleet. So, and then, um, we, we show proven resilience. I talked about being able to do non-disruptive non upgrades uh, in that when you pull a controller, you don't see any hit in performance. This is what we're doing here. We've unplugged, a fire, uh, we've unplugged an I.O. cable. We pulled one of our NVRAM modules, so we see a quick spike in, in latency as it figures it out, fi fixes it, plug it back in. We reboot a secondary controller, no, no hit whatsoever primary controller reboot. So these are the things you might, th this stuff here, these are the kind of things you might be doing when you're doing a controller upgrade or a controller swap or replacement or software upgrade. So that you can just see that we have some blips, but they're really, really short periods of latency while the, while the array either fails over to the other controller or, or just has to figure out, has to flush the NVRAM and move it somewhere else. So in, in conclusion, we started with a, a slide that talked about security, simplicity, swap C, sustainment, support, su support, and speed. And these are kind of the bullet points for that. So if you, if you want to, you're more than welcome to take a picture of that so you don't have to write it down if, if you want. If, or uh, that's kind of where we are with that. So questions, comments? I know we were able to go through that stuff a lot through the presentation. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. It applies three seconds of power. Oh my goodness. And it holds the holds the data center system instead of shutting down. It gives it enough time to wait for the shutdown to take drive, which is one of the things that it's doing. And the uh, platter. Right. Wow. So a capacitor really is what the second point of fire is. And that was pretty common. Yeah. And that was the solution in probably in the late 60s, 87. That's how data centers were built to work. So it's uh, really interesting. It's I'm interesting. Gonna, I'm That's a little over. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I wasn't born in the late 60s. So, <laughs> and I'm pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it was very interesting. I was, uh, and I spent, after that, I had done some other data center power work. One of the ones that I did some time during my junction was 20 years ago. Another story that had to do with this was um, I worked for Internet Startup Company. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm like, we held the root directory of the internet. Yeah. Oh, my. In the data center. Still in the same location. Now, but, That's know, amazing. We were doing about 350 domain registrations a month. And they were year after month. And now we're doing it a second, now, right? They also invented the internet. We were doing 15,000 a week. So you can imagine the country that put on the root directory. Yeah. That's, pre that's incredible. No, no, no. I'm all good. I, I, that, that's it. That's it. And it changes all the time. I've been doing this for about 20, oh, close to 20 years, and we're doing it a lot different now than we were then. And it's so funny because I'll talk to people. You know, I'll do these presentations, and I'll talk to people, and, you know, and I've already moved on. I'm, I'm like, I'm doing, I'm doing the Apple kind of lifestyle, right? Instead of having to carry 15 devices and, and do all this stuff, where people are still doing the same thing they did with storage 20 years ago. They're still having to manage it the same way, managing it with spreadsheets and figuring out my, where the best place is to lay stuff. And, and it dawns on me, you go, I used to have to do that stuff, but we don't have to do that anymore. So are you familiar with the local initiative to build a data center in rural suburban uh, mills? I, I'm from Dallas, so I have very, I, I, I don't know anything that's going. Yeah. Oh. The old Citizen Mill is a historic facility. Is that the one that looks like a castle when you drive by? The Citizen Island is yeah. Yeah. And that company was bought out and they're building a local. Oh, well, that's cool. And the new thing there is that, that building is probably in the late 1800s. Yeah, okay. The days of cotton mills in Georgia used to produce from it. Um, it still has three active generators in the basement. Okay. Interesting. So that company is building the data center there. They have to move the historic building so they can't move it to the outside structural footprint. But they got power in the basement. That's cool. Um, water power. So it's a very interesting uh, idea. So I don't know if it is a storage kind of infrastructure in Dallas anymore. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I just have to have a heavy rainstorm. Yeah. My, I have so much rain coming off my roof. That would be a hard day. So this is your guys' time. Any questions? Thank God for sales guys to sit here and show you the technical yeah. stuff. This one here? Yeah, just with this one right here. Yeah. All right, so the 320, these were controllers themselves. There's right. no drive containment in whatsoever. The drives are actually the rack above. Yeah. Um, when we went to the actual M series, so what we did is for the 5, actually for um, somebody by a metric and then for the um, 513, we sent them this. They had the two new controllers. And they sent these back because the controllers are stateless, so they have no information whatsoever on them. Right. Right. Um, data. right. So all the data is on here, and when you plug this in, you still have your data here. So there's yep. no data mi migration. That's the okay. benefit. Okay. Another thing with the G support with upgrade, you know, is not only are you buying you know the same amount of storage that you already had, but you're buying some more to kind of cover some you know uh, out years or whatever. We have to. Yeah, but there was no data migration yeah. it, it required because the data actually stayed in place. And we have the ability as well as you want to go from those little bitty 128 or 256 gig drives to, to more dense drives. Again, we're not going to charge you for, let's say, let's, let's just do an easy one. Let's say you started out, you had an 11 terabyte system, and, and then you went to an M50 and you got a 44 terabyte system. You're like, well, I don't want those little drives. Well, we, we, we could populate 40, the, 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 in the chassis here and then do a drive evacuation or shelf evacuation 
of those old drives onto the new drives, all in the background, totally transparent to the hosts. And uh, again, no data migration that you have to do. We're migrating the data, but it's all being done within the array. And then we can take the old shelves out and, and uh, remove them out of the data center as well. and do that for you. The compression and deduplication. De de so, you know, deduplication was primarily introduced for backup systems with, uh, so you do a backup and then you send another backup. We're going, well, we have most of that. We don't have to write it again. Well, we're doing that on the other side. You could never do that in primary storage on a spinning drive. They just didn't have the, the you just couldn't calculate fast enough. But with flash, we're able to do that. And actually we see, because we write into that NVRAM space first, while it's an NVRAM, that's when we're doing the dedupe compression and all that stuff, while it sits there, we, have a, we actually write faster with, with more compressible or more with data that actually reduces more. So you, think, you would think, oh, you're having to do more work to reduce it. No, we're having to do less work because all we're having to do is metadata updates and write that down to the array. So it's really, it's really cool technology. Like I said, I've, he's been here three years, I've been here four years. Uh, it's fun to sell. Uh, what's really cool is you talk about this business model. Um, I mean, I literally, I, I, I go and I visit customer after customer after customer in my new role. And I sit down with them. I tell them about that evergreen business model. And they go, they just look at me and go, what's the catch? And I'm like, I, 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 go, I, I go, the only catch is, is you have to buy pure to get the evergreen business model. Uh, I mean, that's the catch. Um, we, we, just, we deliver it over and over again. And one of the things I didn't even throw up here, are you guys familiar with net promoter scores? Have you ever heard of those? Again, don't feel bad if you haven't, and lots of people haven't. But a net promoter score is, a, it's a, we, we get them validated by an indiv, uh, independent company called Sat Matrix, Metrics. But uh, it's a rating of how customers are viewed, and it's a negative 100 to a positive 100 scale. So you, you could fall anywhere in there. And we're in, we're, we rated an 83.5 uh, on this 200-point on this scale, which is very similar. To, you ever shopped at Nordstrom? Nordstrom's is all about the customer experience. Well, they're, they're like an 86. So to just give you a relative idea of what, where, where we sit, customers are really happy buying our stuff. iPhone, Apple, 63. And I like my, I mean, I'm not, I love my iPhone, but we, we have very, very, very high customer satisfaction. So, hi, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no problem. Our, our user base, our customer. We, we, we sell to everybody. So again, being with the company four years when I started, so I, I live in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And so when I started, we covered uh, Dallas Fort Worth uh, up into Oklahoma, Arkansas, and then we've grown and I kept shrinking, shrinking where I was just covering healthcare in my last role. Um, but, but with that said, 
four years ago, uh, we're selling to Capital One, we're selling to the Army, we're selling to uh, CIA, um, FBI, this customer of ours. That, so we sell, we sell everywhere, not 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 just Fed and not just just uh, just big enterprise. But one of my customers is a, cust a company called American Leather. They build furniture. So they're tiny little hundred million dollar a year. It's hundred million dollars a tiny little company, but it's a hundred million dollar a year company. Yeah. That's a lot of furniture. They sell to they sell to like Hilton and stuff like that. So the Hilton will come in and order a thousand couches for for hotels and stuff like that. So to give you just give you a, a, an idea, we sell to everyone kind of in in between. And when you you mentioned service providers, one of my largest customers was a, cust a company called Armor Defense. They're uh, they're a service provider that is really focused on on a, give, providing a secure infrastructure for you to run your run your your stuff on. And so Yeah, AT and T's a gigantic big banks, Barclays, um, I don't know City City's not a customer yet, but like I said, Capital Capital One is a, a large customer of ours. Yep. Uh, B of A is not. We're talking to them, but they are not a customer as of yet. But they would be on our target customer list, so for sure. Uh, you talk about service now. A lot of a lot of the people out in in the Bay Area uh, are are customers of ours. Service now, Workday. They actually one of the things I haven't you know I've been talking about Flash Array. This is our block storage device. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we we announced. Our Flash Blade, we went GA early this year. Flash Blade is an object, is an object store. That's so, but you can attach to it NFS, S3, or SMB, and so it's just a different. So this is our block storage device. That's more of our file storage device. Um, really geared where we see that thing doing really well. Uh, biometrics uh, or any kind of any kind of massive data. It's really great at just doing massive amounts of writes. And reads and processing of uh, of data. So, um, bioengineering we see uh, on your guys' side. I don't, I'm not sure. Artificial intelligence. Yeah, lots of analytics stuff. Um, and it, and that's a that's a platform that there's nothing like it on the market. If if you have the use case for it, there's nothing that you can, that can even come close to to touching it when it comes to to those that kind of workload, it just depends on if you have that kind of workload for it. I mean, what kind of applications are you guys generally running? I don't, I don't need names like SQL or Oracle kind of apps or virtual environments, virtual environments kind of the traditional apps. So it's always funny. I, I walked into Reiki, I was at Reiki on one day trying to sell to them. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So mainframe is not necessarily where we're general mainframe is uh, they write at a different block size. So if we we can work with a mainframe, but you have to put a virtualization device between us and the mainframe. Something that will do that'll talk uh, is it talking FICON, I think? It's talking FICON to that device and talking fiber channel to us. Um, that's true with AS400s as well. But yeah, we can definitely definitely keep up with it. It's just how you connect to it's a little bit different. And, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I didn't bring lunch. Uh, that's a, that's that's perfect. I don't need any more gifts. My suitcase is really small. Oh, 
Oh, awesome. That's awesome. I'd much rather that anyway. What's Fisher House? What is Fisher House? Fisher House is a guest house for a family and a soldier and a veteran who is taking care and helps their children. I am honored that. The I'm I'm absolutely honored that, that that that's what I that you guys are giving in my name. That's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. So we probably have one in the Dallas area, right near, near the VA. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing for veterans. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of military here in Georgia, too, right? That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your time. Oh, and good luck with your projects. Uh, <laughs>